Hey everybody, my name's Allison. Welcome to tonight's welcome webinar. I hope you all are doing well today. Hopefully all of you guys had a good trading day so far. I'm um, just to go over everything in this webinar. What I'm going to do is, hey Daryl, thanks. Thanks for the sight and sound check there as well. I appreciate that. Um, in today's uh, webinar here, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the website. I'm going to show you some of the sneak peeks on the inside and the different things that you can find on our website. And towards the end of our session, I'm going to go through a few picks that I found earlier today, give you a sneak peek of what the end of the day stock picking session is like for our simpler option members. And hopefully we can find some winners there today that you guys can look at jumping into the next day for some positive trade ideas. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, when you first come to the Simpler Trading homepage, this is the page that you're usually treated with, right? You have an area where you can join in on our daily newsletter for free, right? Doesn't cost you anything. And then it goes through and kind of highlights the different memberships that we have. We have a lot of different traders here at Simpler Trading with a lot of different backgrounds and things that they like to focus on. And it's a good collective of knowledge and trading ideas that you can take from our site. Um, once you sign in, which the login button will be over here, you'll notice that it changes to dashboard. And here, you'll be able to at navigate through all your different memberships, your classes, of course, you know, personalize things in your account setting, maybe change up your password if you need to, access support, and then of course, log back out. So let's hop over to memberships so that you guys can see the different ones that we have, maybe some of them you are familiar with, maybe other ones are gonna be brand new to you. The first one, and of course one of our most popular ones, is the options membership, right up here at the top of our dashboard. Options membership, like you would find in most of our memberships, you're gonna get a lot of different things have um, behind it that aren't necessarily free within our community. We do send out and post a lot of free videos, uh, both newsletter and on YouTube, but there's a lot more in depth that you can find within the memberships themselves. On the options homepage here, you'll see all the latest video updates that we've had recently. You can have quick links over to support platform tutorials in the simpler blog here on the right hand side. And you'll always be able to find the trading room schedule. For example, Henry's going to start us off tomorrow morning at 8.20 a.m., 10 minutes prior to market open, uh, followed by Jack with some mid-morning moves, and then, of course, myself with our recycling risk. And we can see that it goes on through, actually, typically can starting off the next day. So you can always have a clear picture of who's going to be on that day. Maybe you find yourself really connecting with John, for example, in your trading. Then you'll know what time and day he'll be on, and you'll be able to quickly access that information if you're out and about and a little bit busier than, you know, the rest of us here in front of our computers all day. Up at the top, you'll notice this orange button here on the right-hand side. It says, enter a trading room. Now, if you're only a part of the options membership, that's the only one you'll be able to have access to. But of course, as you can see here, if you're in multiple memberships, you'll be able to quickly and easily access any of those trading rooms right from this button. So just for example, to show you how it'd work, if I click on the options trading room, right up here, it will open a new tab and it will give me a place where I can type in my nickname. I don't recommend putting your email as your nickname unless you want everybody in the chat room to know your email. Um, but that's a great place to put it. And of course, when you click enter, you'll be taken straight into the room. Mike, thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course, happy to go through this information. We've had a lot of people asking. Um, yeah, John's book is excellent, Mastering the Trade. Uh, it definitely might take a while, but absolutely feel free to join in here. Hopefully we give you some good trade ideas right at the end of the session. Um, and the, yeah, the one thing I love about being here at Simpler Trading is I myself have been a trader for quite a long time and I um, learned from my dad actually. He was the one who kind of got us both into trading as he started to want to learn options. He tag teamed me along with him to start learning it out of the three children. And we went through a lot of different training services, a lot of different education groups and things like that. And though I was able to pick up the skills pretty quickly, um, it's just interesting to see some of the services out there. A lot of people only post paper trades, for example. 
Uh, some people don't like to tell you their returns and things like that. And here at Simpler Trading, uh, the thing that I really like about this community here is all of us traders use real money, right? So when we post an alert in the trade room, which you can see here, this is all real money in our own accounts where we're taking this trade idea, we like it, and we're just letting you know, hey, this is what something that we're jumping into in our account. So we very much want the trade to work out just as much as you do. And sometimes they don't, right? That happens in trading, but we're right there along with you. If it doesn't work out, we take a look at our own trading journals, figure out maybe the reason behind that, what it was, and are always looking to improve ourselves and hopefully, you know, help teach you guys, especially if you didn't take the trade, what might've been a pitfall there so you can learn from our mistakes and continue to grow with it. Um, in the options chat room itself, you can see here, we get pretty extensive chat throughout the day. It's a great community. So not only can you talk to us, but you can talk to all the other traders who are in line with the subscription. I don't know why there's still people in the chat room, but it seems like there's still, you know, 426 in there just hanging out. Um, up top here, you'll be able to see all the alerts um, that we post each day. You can even scroll back some. Uh, quite a few days to maybe check on a trade entry. If you missed one, you can always take a look. Uh, for example, here's one from Danielle about buying AMD. Uh, she posts her targets, she posts what she's looking at there. And certainly if you miss that, you can go over to her uh, recording that day. So you might be wondering where that stuff is. So let's go ahead and walk through that now. Um, the option here under the option is the premium daily videos. So much like the free videos that we post, though we always have with it a premium video that's more in depth into a topic that we're looking at here at Simpler Trading. And you'll be able to see the last few. We always have a search bar available over here. So if you're just trying to look at Henry's, for example, you can type in his name and click search. And it might take a second to populate because Henry as a lot, but um, here, uh, Danielle, for example, took a look at Henry's core list and discussed them, so that's why it's tagged there. But you'll also be able to find a lot of Henry's and everything else, blog posts. So it's a great place that if you're looking for a specific trader, that you'll be able to find it. And of course, if you're looking just for anybody, right, or just the most recent ones, you can find them on this page as well. We also have an extensive learning center um, which we do quite frequently. You can once again search for an individual trader in here or you can just click on the most recent ones that we've had up. Um, these maybe aren't updated as often but it's usually whenever we cross a lot of questions that people are asking or we think that there's a good topic that needs to be talked about um, that maybe doesn't quite fit in the premium video section. We stick it here in our learning center for you guys to be able to educate yourself with as you're learning to trade the market and on your trading journey as well. Under member webinars here, these are webinars that we provide to all of the members of the service. Um, for example, what we're kind of going to be highlighting later towards the end of this webinar is our end of the day stock picking session. Um, I, along with Sam, do this every other week. We switch off every Tuesday. Um, we are talking about potentially adding another one later in the week. Uh, but here we take a look at different symbols for those of you who maybe aren't able to trade during the market day or maybe are looking for some longer term picks. And we discuss symbols that we're seeing some nice setups in and some trade ideas around those. On top of that, you might also get some extra webinars added from some of the other services. For example, you can see here um, we have Ragi. She's one of the main people leading our future service here at Simpler Trading. And you can see that some of those webinars will also get posted here get a little bit of insight from them as well on what they're looking at throughout their trading day. And as I mentioned earlier, if you missed a trade alert or you missed somebody's session in the trading room, never fear, all of those are recorded and you can find them listed here each day. So if you needed to take a look at today, for example, maybe you missed um, Danielle's session or the Fibonacci session, um, or one of my sessions, for example, you can go here and click on it and be able to rewatch the entire thing live and that you'll have an understanding of maybe there's a trade that you're following along with that you want an update on, or maybe you're just curious about their point of view on what's happening with the market that day. Um, you can go here and rewatch that session on your own time. 
So that's everything that comes in the options dashboard, but let's kind of walk through now some of our other services here that we have. Uh, this membership that we offer is the Futures One. As you can see, it's very similar to the members uh, webinar dashboard, though there are a few extra things like the Elliott Wave Dispatch, the Trade Spreadsheet, Simpler Forex for those of you who like to trade currencies, and then of course similar things like the Premium Video, the Learning Center, Members Webinar and Trading Room Archive. Very much like the Options platform, you have all your latest updates. Um, you also have the down here. Uh, that is something where one of our traders will choose a symbol at the start of the week that we think is starting to look like a nice setup. And all the other traders will make videos around it, commenting on what they're seeing on that chart, what their trade ideas that might be around it, or whether they might even jump into it or not. This week was Jack's setup on SMH. Um, so if you clicked on that, I believe this will take you to the page. So you Jack's video and you also have a list of other people's here down below to be able to view um, and kind of get their comments on it. After futures we have foundations for so so for those of you who are brand new to trading or are just stair-stepping along trying to understand things foundations is a great place to start. Um, here you'll have simpler tech uh, which posts regularly. So for those of you who might not be as computer savvy or as uh, trading platform savvy, right? You will be able to find a lot of your tech questions answered here within these videos. The Simpler Exchange is posted every other week. Um, Dear Simpler, that's where you guys can send in your questions that you might specifically have and we'll, us traders will go ahead and answer it. Uh, we of course have the Simpler book that's posted every Friday. It's a nice little recap for the week. and the trade of the week and trade of the week take two. This is great for foundations because it allows the trader who first picked the trade at the start of the week to kind of go back and revisit their trade idea later in the week. Gives you an idea of what they're still seeing, if it's still a viable setup, maybe they already are out and have some profits. And there you get a quick update on the trade if maybe you missed it within the room um, or within the alerts. The other nice thing about our alerts is that we do have a app out there available both on Apple and Android devices and you can get push notifications for those alerts so if you're out and about in the middle of the day and want to keep track of a trade or you're still wanting to jump in maybe on your phone apps trading platform uh, you can get those alerts alerts pushed directly to your phone and then you can also access the rooms straight from your device as well so if you see for example uh, myself or or somebody post a trade alert and you're like hey I want a little bit more information on that maybe they're talking about it now you can immediately go ahead and open the room from your phone and see if they're still talking about the trade and get an idea of their analysis around it before you decide maybe to jump in along with them or decide to hold your own capital and maybe look at a different trade idea around it and then of course we have access from here um, this I believe is free, so you don't necessarily need to sign up for anything, but we do post blog posts regularly, um, I believe once a week now, to this section that gives you an idea of different things that you can take a look at, um, different you know topics. Sometimes they're very general, like what's our strategy selection, our risk gauge. Um, other times they're more in depth about what's actually occurring in the market. And so it's a great little written education. Maybe you're tired of watching the videos and you just want to read something quickly or maybe you're in a quiet place. It's a great place to go to and kind of catch up on what's happening uh, within the market as well as maybe just get a better understanding. For example, the chart setup. If you're a little bit confused by my charts, which we'll walk through here in a little bit, uh, you can click on this and you have some written information that you can always go back to to get a better understanding around that. So let's go back here. After foundations, uh, the next one is bias. Now this one is mainly done by Bruce, as you can see here in the videos. Um, he's an excellent trader, w used to work with the big companies, now he's come to us at Simpler Trading, and it's a great place to get some analysis. And Bruce's uh, bias membership, you have the premium videos, of course, the Learning Center. You get his specific updates on trades, so he updates this quite frequently for you guys to be able to keep track of everything. He also has his own trade spreadsheets. You can 
take a look real time at what how he's doing, how his trades are doing, what he has open, when he has closed, his profit and loss. Like I said, we all trade real money, so we're all you know holding our own accounts and are accountable for trying to make that money grow, just like you guys are. And so we really want to be having as many positive trades as possible. Um, but we're a hundred percent honest in what we're showing and what we're jumping into and what we're posting to you guys and how we keep track of it here. So this is one of the ways Bruce does it through bias. I've always found it to be very helpful, especially if I end up missing a day. I love following along with Bruce. Um, it's great to know if he took any action on anything here later in the day if I had to miss out because I was doing my own stuff. The member webinars and then the trading room archive. So following bias, the next uh, one that you can take a look at is our Fibonacci subscription. Here's where you'll find Carolyn's stuff. Um, you've probably heard of the Fib Queen, and this is her, right? She is often talked about on Kramer, so um, maybe you've heard it from uh, watching his show on TV. But she updates her stuff daily with daily videos. She has her own learning center to learn about the Fibonacci technique and everything in there. Um, not only does she have a time slot in the options members room, uh, but she also has her own breakout room with the Fibonacci uh, membership here. So she'll jump in and out of that throughout the day, be updating charts in there, um, requests from the chat room they might be looking for. So has charts that she updates here daily um, in the daily box chart section. Uh, so you know, it gives you the password right up at the top to be able to enter it, but you can see here, these have been all updated today on different charts that she's taken a look at, different setup entries that she's finding or target levels that she's finding using the Fibonacci technique and symmetry. Um, and then there's always usually folders where you can go inside and have even more <laughs> charts that you can take a look at if you were curious about them, maybe on different time frames like Tesla, there's a 30 minute chart and a daily chart. Uh, you can look in there and find some more in-depth charts to that. As I mentioned, she has her own breakout room for this, um, the Fibonacci Forum. So there's a great place to continue to post and chat with the rest of the community um, in the Trading Room Archive. Now, up next is the crypto, right? So for those of you who are maybe a bit more interested in the cryptocurrency, we do offer a membership there as well. Um, they, too, have their own room different areas where you can ask questions. They have their own Discord channel, for those of you who know what that is, um, top 10 tokens. So they have a lot of different areas where you can take a look, get an idea if you're maybe interested in cryptocurrency or that's what you've been trading mainly most of the time. It's a great place to kind of talk with a community of people about it um, and still get some education and some updates on what they're viewing within the crypto market. The scanner is one of my favorite things here at Simpler Trading. Um, the scanner membership itself is a whole bunch of different scans on a lot of different intervals that you can take. And it gives you a list of symbols that you might not have ever heard of before and gives you potential uh, trade ideas or at least not trade ideas, but charts that you can take a look at and then implement a trade idea on. So. One of my favorite sections here is the daily scans. You can see within each of these sections, we have our own subcategories of all these different scans within it, right? So the daily scans, for example, has about um, over eight, right? Definitely a lot of different scans here. My favorite ones to go to are the daily bullish and bearish nested squeeze and the daily bullish and bearish continuation. You can see those lists also populate here, so you don't have to always go back here to click on it. You can click on it right up top. You can sort in the scanner through different variables. So you might want to just do it alphabetically. Uh, you might want to do it by the last price traded, right? Maybe you want to look at higher end uh, stocks, or maybe you want to look at cheaper ones that you can jump into with actual stock shares if you have a smaller account. Myself, the way I like to sort it, is through open interest. I know with the higher open interest, there's probably going to be a lot more liquidity uh, within the option chain of being able to jump in and out versus the smaller, shorter open interest there. But a lot of different ways that you can sort it. And as you can see here, there can be a lot of different symbols that you can take a scan through. If there's a multiple page, it will usually continue on with two or three or following of how many symbols are listed on that scan. 
And as I said, there are a lot of different scans you can look at. So there are intraday scans, weekly scans, growth to 50 scans. Um, our top rated one's under $10. And see, even for these, they have a weekly squeeze, a daily squeeze. So you can take a look at all of those variables if you want to. Um, 10x scan, so on and so forth. So, and then of course here we also have listed our end of the day stock picking session. Um, so you can always take a look at those. So uh, from the list that I personally create for the end of the day stock picking session, um, some of those names are pulled. From now, sometimes the scanner isn't going to give you, you know, the best setup. You might pull it up on the list and say, okay, yes, it does have a daily squeeze, but the rest of my technicals aren't quite matching up. But sometimes you can find real gold here within the scanner. Um, and I know what myself, my trading has changed dramatically by using this a lot more frequently. Uh, the Edge. Now this is a newer membership uh, from Simpler Trading. Basically we've paired with S3, which is an analytics company. They are able to actually gather all the different information from hedge funds on who's shorting what. Now, we don't know specifically what hedge fund is shorting what exactly, but with their information, we're able to keep up to date on the daily, weekly, and monthly changes that are occurring. So, for example, we do daily videos around the data. <laughs> you can see. Um, but we have quite a few different traders that end up doing daily videos on the edge updates. Um, as you can see here, you get a little bit more in that as well. Here are some of the other traders that do them. Within the edge updates themselves, sometimes they'll send us straight text updates saying this is what we're seeing with our analytics on specific symbols. For example, they had one recently on Lyft with all the short interest data um, and the active short selling that was occurring there. So you can come sometimes get their data directly from here with the graphs. And then they also have the watch list that they update. And this is what I really love about this service as well, because as I mentioned, um, you can take a look at all the short interest data. So it's not one particular hedge fund you're looking at, like I mentioned, but it's the combination of all those and what they're doing. And you can kind of see the flow of which symbols are being shorted versus which symbols are being covered. So for example, if they're in the parentheses here, that means that their trading is the shorts are being taken off the table. They're not shorting that anymore. They're, you know, protecting those shorts or taking them off. And when you see it as a positive number, that means shorts are starting to pile in. So for example, Monster Beverage within the last month has seen about a million shares be added to the short side. And the interesting thing about that, of course, is you can start to learn a lot from the short interest data. Um, sometimes that there's a short squeeze occurring and so many are piling to the shorts that you won't be able to short it as much anymore and you can actually choose an opposite trade of the hedge funds looking for a rising bias trade. And what will end up happening is those hedge funds all of a sudden start to close out of their shorts, it will help push up the price. So you're looking to take a profit while the rest of the hedge funds that were maybe further behind are looking and scrambling to cover their shorts and it can make a very nice profit to lock in for yourself. Other times you might want to play with the short data, right? So if you're seeing a lot of these hedge funds come in and short something, but you're looking at your charts and everything's up near the very top and all your indicators are saying everything's overextended, it's a good time to follow along with the hedge funds and play it to the downside. Now, within the edge watch list, all of these are updated daily. So there's the IBD For those of you who are fans of that, you can certainly follow along there. We have the largest US ETF interest watch list. So this is just strictly ETFs out there that you have the short interest data on. As I mentioned, not only do you have the market cap and what the short interest dollar percent, dollar, what the short interest dollar wise is, as well as just the actual shares being shorted, uh, but you have the monthly change, the percent of that change from one month into the next, the weekly change and the percent of that change, you know, from one week into the next, the daily change and the percent change for that, the total short interest percent float, so that's the percentage of how much shorts are being traded out there versus how many shares are being traded out there total. And then the borrow fee, right? Sometimes it's more expensive to borrow things um, compared to others. A lot of them are priced at 30 cents, but sometimes you'll see it's a little bit more expensive. So when you see, you know, something that costs a lot that has a high borrow fee and you're noticing on your chart things are starting 
typically like they're going to go higher, you can anticipate that the people who are shorting it, right, those hedge funds, are going to scramble a little bit more quickly to get out of it because it's not only costing them more to borrow on those shorts, but it's also, you know, going against them. So they're continuing to hold a losing trade and that in itself can help be a very nice trade setup. And then the days to cover the average amount of days it takes to cover those shorts. And that's the same for all of these watch lists here under the edge watch list. So we also have the largest US short interest stocks themselves, which I'm not sure why that's not populating. So may need to make a note of that to have that populate correctly. I didn't know that one was down today. And then the ST watch list. So this is one that a lot of our traders here at Simple Trading uh, take a look at constantly for symbols. Um, if there's a symbol that you think should be on this list that maybe we look at a lot in the room, you can always, you know, send us an email, let us know, and we can try and get that added to the list from S3. We can't add every suggestion, um, but a lot of these are the bigger names that we take a look at every day, like Lulu. Um, you know, CGC is always an interesting one to take a look at with the short interest data around that. Amazon, Microsoft, Netflix, some of the bigger names out there. And we also have a combination. So if you ever need to take a look at a prior day's watch list, we have those archived here for you as well. And then last but not least on the Edge dashboard is the earnings calendar. Now this one I believe gets updated once a week roughly. Uh, but this one is excellent. There's different criteria around this. We are working to have the columns match up with the Edge watch list columns. Um, right now S3 has to do all of this manually. They're trying to find a way to get it a little bit more automated on their side rather than actually taking the time to pull all this data for us, which we're very appreciative of. Um, but the early earnings calendar itself is great. The criteria is that the stock symbol has to be above, I think, 10 or $15, right? So you're not going to see too small of a stock here, right? Like a $2 stock or anything like that. Um, but the short interest percent float also has to be and the reason why that's a part of the criteria here is because if it has a larger short interest percent float and it ends up, you know, going the opposite way of that from earnings, let's say it has a strong pop up, a lot of the hedge funds are shorting and it has a high short interest percent float, then there's a greater probability of those hedge funds starting to scramble to cover. That in turn helps push up the price and it could also allow for a bigger gap to the upside to where you know, us, the ones who kind of have this whole insider knowledge here, are able to take better advantage of that um, and knowing maybe how long to stay in the trade, when to take those profits, or having a better setup for entry. So after that, um, the Small Account Mastery, this is a membership John has started recently after his Small Account Trading class. It's a great place, and here you'll be able to find all the trades that he's been taking. Uh, the Learning Center, we have the Options 101 and Options Boot Camp in here. Great educational place to be able to learn, um, of course, in the live trading session. So here's the schedule for that. It happens once a month, typically, um, for a few hours each day for the live trading room schedule, if you've kept on board with from the class into the membership here. And it's a great place to get, you know, just some education overall and how you're building your small account, everything else. And then, of course, there's the trade of the week. And then we also have classes. So classes, my classes, are any of the courses that you might have signed up for. The courses that we provide are more in-depth education, right? So you'll definitely find a lot of education material within the memberships themselves. But let's say, for example, you wanted a bit more in-depth on um, the Fibonacci technique, right? Then you can go to Carolyn here in the class. You can click on her as a trader and you can see all the in-depth classes she's talked about, of course, focusing mainly on timing and on the Fibonacci analysis. If you've attended maybe one of my sessions and you hear me talking about the profit recycling strategy and how it's a great advantage to be able to use that to offset day trading rules, um, for those of you who like to intraday style trade but maybe have a smaller account under 25,000, this is a great strategy to be able to learn that. It's also just a great one for understanding capital risk and how that can you know, affect your account and your trading style. And so there are all these different classes by our traders 
where you get a lot more in-depth information. Um, I know on the class that I just did, the profit recycling one, it was scheduled to be a four-hour class. It ended up being a six-hour class. There's a lot of information that you get bundled with that. So, for example, whenever I did mine, um, I added on an additional, you know, walking through the options chain webinar with it that was available um, to anyone who attended the class. There was also some checklists, some, you know, written uh, material that you can download. And then, of course, if you're a part of the live trading, you have those sessions all recorded. And it's a great way to be able to implement those strategies that you're learning in real time and see how those traders actually use it during market hours. And of course, try and follow along with some trades to ideally pay for the class, right? That's always our goal is if, you know, you join in on the live trading days, we're you know, ideally hoping for all of us, right? Because we're all trading real money, but we're hoping that you'll be able to take some positive trades, some winning trades that will basically cover the costs for the class and get your account growing. So those are the courses that we offer uh, that you can find here. And if you want it more by, you know, maybe I want to learn more about futures or I want to learn more about stocks or Forex, you can also search that way through this, you know, eliminate the ones that you don't really want to look at. Or if you want to learn it by strategy, we have that available to you. So if you want to specifically learn about butterflies, um, I know Bruce has some excellent classes surrounding butterflies and how he uses them. Uh, we also have, you know, skill levels. So you know, beginner or a bit more intermediate or advanced, you have those different skill. Or maybe if you're just looking for a cheaper class to jump into, uh, you can, of course, adjust that by the price and also by the popularity. Um, and, and the popularity, you can also do it to newest, price low to high, or high to low. So a lot of different ways that you can search through our archive of classes here if you want more in-depth information about a particular strategy um, or a particular, you know, trade idea or some per a better insight of what that trader maybe looks at overall. We also have indicators available here at the Simpler Trading website. So Eric is one of the um, gurus here at creating indicators for us. Um, he is excellent at being able to take some of the ideas and some of the things that we like to look for um, or that we want to find on our charts and be able to create an indicator around that so it's a lot easier to read. For myself, he's already made me a few. Um, but as you can see here, we have stuff like the Ready Aim Fire, the 10X bars. You can search for it by platform. So maybe you're only on Thinkorswim or only on TradeStation. Uh, you can click on one of those and see exactly what indicators are available to you. If you have eSignal, for example, there's you know only one indicator on our site that you could use if you wanted to purchase it. Um, but the other ones certainly are a bit more extensive. And usually within these, if you're Taking a look, let's say we are going by newest here. Usually when you click on one, um, for example, the compound breakout tool here usually gives you a video on how you can use it, the platforms it's available in, um, and then you can choose the option, of course, for which platform you want that to be sent to. But overall, a uh, great place to find some indicators that you might be seeing the traders use quite frequently in the room. And if you wanted your chart to match up, or if you really like the indicator that you're seeing that trader use, and you think it'd be beneficial to your trading, maybe you don't always want to watch them, or they're not looking at the same charts or symbols that you're looking at, it's a great way to have that indicator available to you. Um, of course, we have a traders page here at Simpler Trading. So if you just wanted a little bit more in-depth written information about us or about our experience or our trading journey, this is a great place to go and kind of meet all of us, um, you know, see how we got started, see what we have to offer here, maybe about our chart setup and everything else. Um, and then, of course, the blog, as I mentioned, is available on the side. So that overall is the Simpler Trading website. Um, like I said, I think this is an excellent community. As I've mentioned earlier, I've been a part of a lot of different communities out there whenever I first started my trading journey. And, you know, a lot were a little bit more painful to be a part of. You kind of always, you know, were second guessing yourself, like, are, are you, you really trading your real money? Are these actual, you know, real life results from what you're doing and everything else? And I say simpler trading is the most 
open book about that. And that's why I really loved it here and love to be a part of this community because they really are trading 100% their money. They're 100% trying to win on their trading just as much as we want you guys to win on your trading. And we really care about the community, right? We really want you guys to learn. And obviously, we'd love for you to stay on board, but we really want to teach you how to fish, right? We don't want to fish for you. We want to teach you how to fish. So if you decide to go trapping or if you decide to just, you know, take a step back and do this on your own, you have all the tools and abilities to be able to do that from your education and your work here. Um, as I mentioned, I know a lot of other sites don't have this, but with our Simpler Tech site, we also have a great support team here um, that will be able to help you both on being able to sign up for stuff, but as well as just the technical side of trading, of trying to get your indicators loaded onto the platform. Um, any questions you have around that, we have a great support team here who's available that you can just call in or email in and they'll be able to answer and direct any of your questions. And we really work hard. So I know um, whenever I used to be down there, I know whenever I go down the stairs and I'm, you know, talking with the people who work the phone calls down there, you know, it can be sometimes a long conversation, but it's because we really want you to understand it, have a better understanding. We're there to, you know, answer all your questions. So if your one question then leads to five more, we're happy to answer those five more for you. Um, so that's what we have here in regard to the classes. What I'm going to go ahead do now is flip over to my personal charts here and like I mentioned I'm going to kind of walk you through what our end of the day stock picking sessions or at least what I like to do for my end of the day stock picking session and hopefully give you guys some great to use give you some better it's coming up so highlight here is MKC this is one that I've been tracking for a little bit. I'm starting to like the setup on this a bit more for a few reasons. One, we've already gone past earnings, right? So we don't have to worry about that coming into view anytime soon or have this potentially be looked at as a shorter term trade entry. Uh, this study right here is the ATR trailing stop. I have it set as dots in red, you know, as resistance and blue as support. Notice here the trend change that we had from resistance to support. We went into a bullish trend. We've started to consolidate from there. Um, that consolidation shouldn't be too surprising because our momentum on the awesome oscillator, this is a free study on most trading platforms, was rather high. So it needed to come back down and reset, which is what it started to do. It hasn't crossed below the zero line yet, so it hasn't turned into a bearish signal. Um, and this is a healthy reset to see um, allowing the price to consolidate or potentially pull back. Now that it's gone back down towards the zero line, we've made enough room so that it has room to build back up into a new um, mountain, a new peak here, if you will, and that could allow a change from going into consolidation back into a bullish trend. Uh, this is the compound breakout tool. This is one that I highlighted whenever we were in the indicator section. It's actually a combination of several different signals that I personally use off of several different simple moving averages, uh, the MACD histogram and the stochastics full indicators. For those of you who might be familiar with it, I used to look at several different, several different signals off of each of those indicators and use them in line with each other um, before I came here to simpler trading. And if you thought my charts looked messy now, you did not want to see them before. I, I knew what I was looking at, but it looked like a road everywhere, right? That had arrows and everything like that. And so when I came here, I, I you know, asked the, the god of coding, Eric, to look at what I was looking for. Any way you can try and into an indicator to where up my chart, but I'm still getting exactly the signals I'm looking for, and he was able to combine those into the compound breakout tool. So usually we'll show an overall change in trend, either rising or bearish bias, and it can also hint at consolidation. When you see the signal print back to back like it's hinting at consolidation, that this, this one ended up out, and we started to see them print back to back consolidating here. Of course, for those of you who might be familiar with uh, simpler trading here, there's the TTM squeeze. 
we know a squeeze uh, prints red like this whenever there's a possibility of a greater than expected move. So notice how we're consolidating. We've had a healthy pullback to allow for a bullish trend to start to continue. We have the daily squeeze printing. The price itself is holding the 30 period simple moving average as support. Um, one of the indicators I'm right now back testing because for myself, whenever I have Eric create me an indicator, I always like to do some back testing on it before making it available just to make sure everything's, you know, working properly, all the coding looks correct and everything like that. Um, and then this one is just to simply indicate bearish or bullish divergent bar. Now that is whenever the price bar, um, for example, a bullish divergent bar like we printed today, we saw the price bar today technically lower than the previous price bar's low, but we closed today's price in the top 50% of today's trading range. So when that occurred, it turned it to this light green color. Um, I might need to change the colors. You'll be able to do that yourself, certainly, to whatever colors you want. So I might try and make that a little bit easier for you guys to see on the webinar. Um, but it's a light green color right now. So basically what that tells me just by quickly looking at it is that it closed in a bullish divergent bar. And typically, when you have a bullish divergent bar like this, especially off a of support level, it usually is just another signal that the price could bounce up within the next few days. Um, some great examples of bullish divergent bars by support here, for example, one that we printed recently down near the 30 and ATR trailing stop caused a move higher for the next three days. Back here, we had a nice bullish divergent bar off the 100 period moving average, and we saw a nice trend follow through there. Um, we had one gapped off the low, so you might have been curious on this earnings, should I continue to short this, should I not? Um, and there are certainly a few different indications here along with the bullish divergent bar telling you maybe hold off from continuing to short it. We might see some consolidation or a pullback. And that's exactly what we saw there. So right now, this is a sign. We're holding our moving averages as support. Momentum's reset, so now we have room to move back up. We don't quite have a bullish signal here yet, but this is still just showing the consolidation that we're currently in. And then we have that squeeze, which we know could create a better expected move. When we look at our longer times here, for example, the weekly chart, the weekly chart has seen a shift from below the zero line to above it on momentum. So this is rising now. We do have a red bar forming this week, but it's Monday, right? So this can easily change back to a green bar. Back here, we had a bullish signal start to print on our compound breakout tool. Typically, you want at least two of the boxes to print in line with each other. You'll get a dot down here signaling that they're in line. And if all three print, then you'll get a triangle, which of course makes for a better signal. So back here, whenever this printed, it was back on this low. Now you might have thought to yourself, this is a little early. I don't know if I want to jump in here. It's right at resistance. But certainly once it started to cross above that, or you got that third signal to the that signal there alone would have been an excellent entry point to go long on MKC and continue it up to this resistance or to where we're trading at now. Another thing I like about MKC here is that we recently saw a trend change from red to blue on the ATR trailing stop. That in particular on a longer time frame like the weekly and monthly usually is a good indicator of a shift in the trend and can be sometimes a great entry point to jump in. For example, the last time we saw MKC, we saw a move high that week seven when that change occurred and we saw a move up to 156 you know so close to a 50 point move higher from that change to here now back here didn't necessarily follow through as strongly we saw a move from around 102 up to around 106 right so you always want to go back you know confirm how often it happens here on MKC we saw a move from 70 up to a high of around 107. So usually you see a pretty good point follow through. We certainly have room the indicators for a continuation higher. The 10 period simple has just rolled back above the 30. Both are above the 100. So this is a bullish formation on our simple moving averages. So I'm liking this also as a long term pick. You might be a little cautious, right? If we start to run into 156, 157, and it starts to stall out there, maybe look at taking a small profit off the table and then if we start to break above that you could always look to jump back in um, and continue to go along in this and then last but not least on the monthly time frame here momentum's a little high so once again maybe it's a shorter term trade that you're doing it's more off a daily and weekly chart but we're in a very strong stacked up formation 
plunger bands, which are these blue still flaring open, so they're still waiting for price movement to the upside. Um, so we recently had a monthly squeeze last year that fired, and you can see how well that took us to the upside as well. So like MKC, I like this more on the daily and weekly chart, and I think if we could get a test back up at least to 156, it could make for a quick profit on something like a long call or a long debit call vertical spread. And if we start to break above those levels, to me, I would keep an eye on the monthly and weekly, of course, for those momentum bars. But overall, I think that would be an excellent trend to the upside from there. Another one I'm taking a look at a little bit more closely is KBH, KB Home. Now, this one this is definitely a lot cheaper, right? It's around 26, 29. Uh, but similar situation where daily squeeze. Our daily, weekly, and monthly EMAs are all stacked up. That's what this indicator here is telling me, that the 5 is above the 21. We recently had a crossover earlier this year with the price holding above the zero line. And notice that it didn't stay consolidated around that level, right? We continue to see a nice stair step and trend higher and have been building up from there. Momentum's reset a little bit. It's a bit choppy. But what I like about this is that it's still above the zero line overall. So there's still bullish strength uh, compared to the bearish strength. We have a choppiness in our breakout signal that's still hinting more at consolidation on our compound breakout tool. Um, and it's usually not too surprising to see that print whenever you see a squeeze printing as well. And not every time you'll see those two print like that when consolidation's occurring. Um, it's not too surprising to also see a squeeze follow through. So we have a daily squeeze. Um, notice once again, nice bullish diversion bar we formed today. We're still holding the and we're still in a nice bullish trend. So KB Home's another one that I wouldn't mind looking for a longer term play um, to maybe hold through, you know, the next few weeks or summer as we anticipate more home sales going through as, you know, kids are getting ready to uh, be on summer break. It's a great time to move and not have it affect them during the school year. Another thing I like here on the weekly chart is we recently broke above the 100 period moving average and are currently holding that as support. We had a shift change from red to blue on our ATR trailing stop. Once again, sometimes it shows very nice follow through. Other times on KB Home, it you know has seen a little bit of consolidation. But this here, along with the fact that we're holding above the 100, to me is a good sign that it could continue to the upside. We also recently had a switch from below to above the zero line. So this is a bullish sign there. And of course, we're continuing to see momentum build and have plenty of room for it to reach the prior peaks that it's made in the past. Compound breakout tools still not as much. Uh, that's not too surprising because it's hugging right now the 100 period moving average. We haven't yet seen it stair step above. But to me, as long as it remains, it's a good sign for KB Homes. That's what I'm seeing on that one for a potential rising bias trade. CMI is another one that I like. Um, this to me has a little bit clearer uh, signal here on the indicators, a little bit more confluent. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Of course, it has that daily squeeze happening. Love to see that um, for that greater than expectant move. We have the daily, weekly, and monthly EMAs all stacked up. We have a nice bullish trend starting to occur above the 100 period moving average. We have momentum building up from the zero line. So right, we're getting green bars following one another and plenty of room for it to continue high. We have a full set of signals here on the compound breakout tool. Um, so this is a bullish sign as well. And then of course, the daily squeeze printing. Notice how the 30 period moving average since crossing above the 100 has been a strong level of support. Today we went down and tested that level and closed in a bullish divergent bar, also trading back above the 10. So both of these are now acting as support. 10 is above the 30. Both. So this is a nice stacked up formation that we're seeing on CMI. The other thing I really liked about this is it's once again already after the earnings news. So we have already seen the market digest announcement here on CMI. Um, it you know wasn't a dramatic. Other, but the fact that it's still holding support and has these bullish signals printing along with the squeeze to me is a good sign. We there really quick on the weekly chart. 
You might want to be a little cautious. Momentum's starting to get high here, but we do have prior highs that we can test. Once again, we've seen a recent cross above the 100. We're holding the 10 as support. And if we continue to bounce up here throughout the week, our upper Bollinger Band's up near 175, so that can certainly allow for profit to the upside. Another symbol that we can take a look at here real quick is TDY. So TDY is also starting to be in a bullish trend. Now it is going into consolidation. Notice how the Bollinger Bands are starting to tighten together. Um, usually when you see it come together, you know that the price is going to consolidate some. Kind of have a nice reset after this nice bounce up from the ATR trailing stop down here back in March. This is allowing the momentum to reset back towards the zero line. So now we have a lot of room to move back to the upside. Today we ended up closing with our second signal on our compound breakout tool. So this is starting to be a bullish sign. The last time we printed two signals like this was back here when we traded at support. And you can see we had a decent run follow through. Um, this here was your signal to look at getting out or protecting some of your profits. And we started to trade flat and choppy from there. Uh, certainly going into earnings, I probably would have recommended taking profits off the table either way. But now that earnings has passed, we're going into a nice uh, consolidation and we're starting to get some bullish signals. Of course, once again, today we closed in a nice bullish divergent bar. We're holding the 30 period moving average of support. The price also was able to cross back above the 10. So that's now turned back into a support level as well. And we're pretty really squeezed. And the thing I like about TDY in particular is when we look at the past year, it doesn't typically stay within a squeeze for very long before firing. Sometimes it's only a day. Sometimes it's four days. Um, we're in our fourth day today. So this could be an excellent sign that you might be able to find a profit in this a little bit more quickly if this squeeze acts like the other ones that we've seen this past year, buyers quickly to the upside. Really quick on that weekly time frame, just because I love to take a look at this. Um, here, once again, we've had a switch from red to blue in the ATR trailing stop. The 10 has recently crossed back above the 30. We're holding the 10 on support, continuing to do so into this week. So not only do we have a nice bullish formation here on our simple moving averages, but we're also holding the 10 as support as well. We had a crossover of momentum that's continuing to build up still has room to reach the prior peaks that it made prior um, to the last five years or so. Compound breakout tool still isn't giving us much. It's a little bit choppy here, um, but everything else is still pointing to a nice bullish bias in my opinion. Now, more than likely we're getting some choppiness in the signal because notice how the price has kind of flattened out. It's probably down to retest support. Um, and as long as that can hold, that's a good sign that we could at least go back up and test the prior highs at 260, if not start to see a bounce in to the upside from there. Uh, really quickly, uh, last few that we can take a look at, TXN um, had a healthy pullback today. Uh, so here we're making a daily squeeze. We're in consolidation, right? We're seeing that with the momentum start to set back towards the zero line and the compound breakout signals printing choppy. You'll notice also the Bollinger Bands are coming together. So all of this is in line with consolidation. But once again, we've had earnings already occur. So the market has digested that news. Today we saw a pop down. You know, if you were already long in this, you might have been concerned here of, oh my gosh, is it starting to break? Uh, but this is when I always recommend look back to your technicals. What are they telling you? Well, what I'm seeing right now is that we're holding the 30 period moving average as support. We created a very strong bullish divergent bar, so that's a good sign that it's continuing to hold a support and could bounce back up a few days. We're technically in a stacked up formation, a bullish formation with our simple moving averages. We're still printing the blue ATR trailing stop as support. We have recent highs that we could go test. Look at our multi squeeze tool up here which just allows me to be notified if there's being a squeeze printing on other time frames. I can tell that there's a squeeze off the monthly chart. So let's take a quick look at both the weekly and the monthly. The weekly has seen that shift change from red to blue in the ATR trailing stops. So that's starting to be a bullish sign. 
The 10 period moving average has rolled off the 100 and has crossed back above the 30. The 30 is now starting to roll up off the 100. So this is a good sign that things are turning back into a bullish trend. We had a crossover momentum above the zero line. This is also a bullish sign for a potential continuation higher. Once again, not quite a signal here on the compound breakout tool, unfortunately. Uh, but everything else about this is looking pretty strong. Once again, it's only a Monday this week, so please keep in mind this could change by the end of the week. Um, but it is showing a nice bounce. So for TXN, for example, Mike, if you're a little bit over your head, certainly, that's why we have all the education out there to really dive in what I'm saying. Um, but for example, with TXN, if I were to look at taking a potential trade on this, one of the first ones I might consider doing is a put credit spread. A put credit spread is a rising bias trade, but can also work out in case you continue to see consolidation. The way it works out is as long as your short strike remains out of the money. So let's say I went out two weeks from now to May 24th. I'm not sure what the premium is, but we'll take a look at this and decided to open an at the money spread. Now here on a three point spread, you're getting about 88 cents of credit. So I'm in the risk on this, right? What is my capital risk versus the profit potential I have? Well, in a credit spread, the credit that you receive is your profit potential, that's 88 cents. To determine the risk, you take the spread width, which is 115 minus 112, so it's a three point and you take away your from that, which is 88 cents. So your risk is 212 for an 88 cent profit. Not the best risk versus reward in my opinion, but the idea here is that you believe TXN will stay above 115 by 24th expiration. So if you're concerned it might still stay kind of choppy in this range, but you do think it will bounce higher from where we're at, then this is a great trade to we do all of a sudden go back into a bullish trend and just continue to the upside, you'll receive that 88 cents as a profit, lock it in and move on to a new trade. If it kind of stays top choppy in this range, right? Maybe we don't see a strong move to the upside, but it stays within this trading area. Well, as long as it remains above 115 going into the close of May 24th, you'll still end up receiving that profit. So a credit spread, is a great way to take advantage of a choppier sideways market as well as a trending market. In the case of a put credit spread, you want it to be a consolidating to a bullish market. Um, but longer term, let's go back to that monthly chart here real quick. Say you wanted this more as just a stock pick itself or as just a long call to jump into based on one of the longer time frames, right? Maybe let's just keep it as simple as possible and look at a long call or the stock. Well, for myself, what I like to do is go out to longer time frames like the weekly and monthly charts and get that um, added, you know, confluence to be with the daily chart. So here on the monthly time frame, momentum has had a nice reset during this pullback to the 30. We held the third to bounce back up. This is helping momentum move back. Certainly have, we have room to move back up to this prior peak or even this peak that we had back here in early 2000. This month, we're also starting to print our second breakout signal to the upside. So this is another good sign that this is starting to turn into a bit more of a bullish sentiment. Notice back here with the compound breakout signal started to print two signals. We had a nice run up in May going into when that signal stopped, more than likely because we were consolidating. It continued from there, so as long as it continued to hold the 10, that was a, still a good sign to go long, um, and certainly with the continuation of building momentum. Notice back here, we started to get two signals of the compound breakout tool for a bearish signal. This was starting to signal, because we're technically in a bullish trend, but we're getting a bearish signal, a move down to some sort of support level. In this case, we broke the 10, we went down and tested the 30, and when the 30 started to hold, especially when it canceled out here, that was a good sign that you would have taken any bearish, you know, put profits and maybe switch back to a call it again to go long. I've been waiting until more was added on your to be in agreement with that. So in this case, we now have the momentum in agreement with a bullish sign. We have the two breakout signals to the upside, and we have a monthly 
squeeze. Now, a monthly squeeze, as we look back at the prior years, can print for over a year in time. So it might be one that you're looking at on TXN to just jump into the stock itself. And when you see pullbacks, you can sell short calls. Um, or if it's just continuing higher, you're just holding the stock for a move to the upside. The other suggestion you can take a look at is going out further in time for a long call. So you might make it maybe a little bit not as far out, but something like July expiration that still gives you 74 days with the idea that we will press higher from here. Uh, for example, the 110 strike, if you jumped in there, is $8.85. Very decent amount of open interest here, so you know the liquidity of jumping in and out of this will be a little bit easier at the mark compared to you know the bid, bid and ask, which is a little bit more expensive. You see that the intrinsic value built in at 115.86 is that there's already $5.86 of intrinsic value built into this. Only really need a three point move higher for this strike to all of a sudden break even, and you need that three by July expiration. So that seems very possible with TXN. And of course, anything above that will be a have. And if you get that three prior to the of course, there will be still some extrinsic value built into where it will increase and still allow you that profit. Typically on long call, I personally like to try and aim for a point because it's a nice buffer zone of it being in the money and it means that for every dollar of movement, you're getting about seven profit um, added for that dollar move. In this case, the 110 strike is 0.68 delta, so it's close seven that I typically look for. If you want to buy yourself another amount of time, you could always look to go out to something similar to a loop. So for example, January 2020, um, a little shy of being a year from now, right, 256 days out, you could jump into one of those strikes. If I look at a leap, I don't mind going with a little bit smaller of a delta because uh, usually it's a little bit more expensive, so I always like to keep my cap risk in check. But once again here, the 110 strike, 95 amount of open interest in all three buy at the money right from 105 to 115 and you could look to jump into this and the nice thing about getting a leap time into the trade to base it more off the monthly time frame and the theta decay dramatically as if you went with option expiration so hopefully that gave you guys you know a trade ideas for the upcoming week at least for a bullish bias you can uh, determine maybe a trading strategy from there or just look to get it into a long call or the stock itself if you want to make it easier on yourself um, but this is kind of what we do on our end of the day stock picking sessions is I'll walk through different you know lists that I'm looking at different symbols that I'm taking a look at and particularly longer term picks um, for those of you who also maybe are only wanting longer term portfolio picks or maybe are looking to expand and trade don't necessarily want to sit at your computer all day maybe you're working you know like i am and you don't have time to look at your computer or maybe you're in semi-retirement mode and you want to go out and enjoy the world rather than sitting in front of your computer all day um jack and i are actually doing a class this upcoming month we have webinar coming up this week on Thursday uh, that I'll post a link to but it's specifically on high confidence swing trades and um, I gotta say these have been personally a real game changer it's how I initially started my trading back in the day with paper trading I only really looked at long calls and so I jumped in like that and you know I you know as I started to learn more strategies I started to expand things I learned different things and there are absolutely things I love about butterflies and iron condors and everything like that but I gotta say going back to just high confidence swing trades where it's just strictly I'm looking at a long call or I'm looking at a stock and I'm jumping in and I'm jumping out has done wonders for my account and so Jack and I are going to be talking about that this Thursday we're going to talk about how you can use insights that you might hear internally from earnings um, around a company or the internals around a company and how you compare that with the technicals that you see on the chart to make for some longer term portfolio picks and higher confidence swing trades. So I'll post that in the room. It's a free webinar this Thursday if you guys want to join in.
But otherwise, I hope that gave you a good insight to the Simpler Trading website. For those of you who maybe haven't been, uh, who know about Simpler Trading, for those of you who haven't, you know, been on until very recently, you have a better insight of the different memberships and things that we can offer. All the tools and, you know, learning videos that we have available to you, both free and both as in-depth ones for the classes that we do um, here. And I hope it was beneficial. And like I said, I really hope that you guys get some nice um, trade ideas off of this. I'll post the symbols that we took on the room. So that way, um, if you want to write those down, if maybe you missed out earlier and want to write down the ones that I was taking a look at, just to watch for the remainder of the week. But thanks again, guys. And thanks, Daryl. I appreciate it. Um, like I said, hope if you guys have any questions, please ask me now. I'm more than happy you before I head out for the night. I'm just writing out the that we took a look at. There you guys go. Yeah, not a problem. I'll wait another minute or two typing up questions, um, but if not, maybe I did a good job explaining. Yeah, uh, so what's the a $35,000 account? Well, I got to say that's a pretty healthy amount, right? Um, when I first got started and some of the accounts I've started with only five or 10,000, that's what I would call a smaller account. Um, anything to me above 25,000 size account in my opinion, because you have the ability to do day trades and style trades in that uh, point. It depends on kind of what the strategies that you find. Yes, Ash, this will be recorded. Um, it will be sent out to you. Ah, so there you go, um, to where you'll be able to watch it. Um, but the best strategy to grow a $35,000, I got to say, for myself, whenever I started growing accounts quite a bit, um, especially larger term ones, back to the basics of what I knew, right? So longer term swing trades were great. Um, the, using what I came up with the profit recession, uh, that was an excellent way for me to grow my accounts without having much capital risk out there. Uh, I think things like vertical spreads, long debit call and put vertical spreads or and call credit spreads is a great, great way to earn uh, grow the account overall. And uh, another thing of um, our butterflies, because they're very inexpensive typically, and give you an excellent risk first. You don't necessarily need the full profit potential to away with a two or three times profit compared to your risk. So those are take a look at if you haven't done so already. Um, if you are already an options member, feel free to check out that learning center and get an idea around how those strategies work. And of course, we have classes if you want more in knowledge or come join us on Thursday through, you know, the very simple way of just opening a long call and making it go through. Depends, right? It depends on the capital risk you're putting out versus, um, you know, how many trades you're putting on and everything else. So hard to say how much average you can make a year right? Because, you know, some years are harder than other, but it also just depends on how much is out there. For myself, personally, if I had a $35,000 account, I would use the 25% rule there. So max, I would only be trading half of the account, which would probably be around, what, like 17500 um, And the other half I would because what ended up working out for me as I went on the trading journey, that's what I found to be my not getting too stressed out, um, you know, not losing sleep over how much capital I had invested, knowing I always had where if, you know, I had bills I needed to pay or, you know, money that I needed to pay myself with and maybe it wasn't the best trading week or I had money set aside in the account that I could pull out and still pay myself with it. Um, a great way to look at losses as a business. Right? So sometimes if you're a business, let's say it was, a construction business or something like trucks and all of a sudden one of your trucks got a flat tire or the engine blew out well that might be a deficit for that week or month compared to 
but it's a business expense, right? Where you expect it to happen eventually, and that's why you have a part of your account on top. You can deal with those and still pay yourself and still make a living. Um, a, a great thing to check out, maybe income advisory, too, for if you can grow your account. Like I said, he has a great track record following for all of his trades. To Uh, yeah, so Rod at looking at the ETFs. Um, some of our other traders do as well. Um, Rogi's does options room, and like I said, she mainly does a lot of the futures trading. Um, but I would definitely get to her if you're looking for ETFs or instruments. That's a great way to trade them. For myself, I love the SPY, um, Q's, IWM. I look at those. So that's what I'll <laughs> typically dive to for the ETFs because they're cheaper versions of the SPX and DX. And so, yeah, not a problem. I'm always happy to answer your questions. If you guys have any, please feel free to email us. If it's a trading question, they'll be, you know, sent out to one of us traders. So you'll get a little bit more personalized answer there. If it's just a question. Some of the services that we offer or that support will definitely be able to help you out from there. But thanks, guys. I appreciate you um, or for watching the recording, for those of you who are. I hope you all have a great rest of your night, a safe and wonderful And as always, may the trade be with you. And I hope to see you guys in the room the next day or in the next few weeks. Bye.